It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time! I'm Jen. I'm Murray. I'm Dave. And that was a bit of a flashback to how we used to do intros. Another flashback is today we're going to be reviving the forgotten regiments of the Imperial Guard. We're going to be converting up, painting up, building up, whatever it takes to get the Talons, the Mordians, and the Vostroyans table ready. Bit of old school kit bashing, re-sculpting, and bit of printing. <laughs> Either way, it's going to be fun. Let's, Let's do it. So I know a lot of you are from around the same era of Warhammer that I am from, and if you are, you'll remember the Imperial Guard as a faction with many, many regiments of interesting infantry. Through the 90s and the early thousands, the Imperial Guard were typified by multiple different regiments, each with entirely different sculpts of infantry, heavy weapons teams, and a few accessories. This is no longer the case. With the last one of these regiments being released in 2007 in Metal, the Vostroyans, only recently the Death Corps of Krieg, the Forge World poster child faction of Imperial Guard getting a plastic kit in Kill Team. Whether these models were abandoned due to lack of interest or because they were too close to real world analogs and thus too hard for Games Workshop to copyright and make their own, I don't think we'll ever know. But suffice this to say, they are gone and honestly, probably for good. I doubt we'll ever see as many regiments as there once were again, so we wanted to revisit those really cool regiments that are a huge part of Warhammer's lore and history and make some for ourselves. I'm going to be tackling the Vostroyans, Murray's going to be making a great miniature for the Talon Desert Raiders, and Jen is going to be making a fun little Mordian Iron Guard Rattling. But I'm first up, so let's make a Vostroyan. So 2007 saw the launch of the first range of Imperial Guard that weren't in the old books, and that was the Vostroyans, originally released all in metal at a time where metal minis were slowly becoming more uncommon. These models were absolutely awesome. And while young Dave couldn't justify the expense of this entire range of guardsmen who were metal models, thus sold in clam packs, thus very expensive. I always appreciated. The Vostroyans have sort of like a Cossack vibe and altogether they have a really cool Prussian aesthetic without being directly like World War II Soviets like the Valhallans. They feel a little bit more at home in the world of 40k. So today I'm going to try and reimagine a Vostroyan using plastic kits and resin pieces and a touch of sculpting. So let's see what I can do. Looking through my bit selection, we find the very reason I don't throw anything away. I have a spare Cadian body that I had destroyed the back of for a previous Trader Guard model. And this just leaves a little bit of gap around the waist, which I can fill with some putty. But when I look at Vostroyans, I see their coat as being sort of just above knee length. It's that awkward space similar to the Steel Legion where the Death Corps of Krieg coats are far too long and the Cadian tails on their jackets a little bit too short. However, given the fact that the death core coats button in an overlapping fashion, which is completely different to how the Vostroyan coats connect, I'm opting to use the Cadians as I feel aesthetically, while a bit shorter than the Vostroyans were depicted, this is actually closer to their appearance. Now, a lot of the Vostroyan models have chain mail over their torso, so I'm going to sculpt a layer of chain mail over the top of this Cadian. The Vostroyan firstborn are also characterized by their wonderfully crafted firearms, which are passed down from generation to generation. There are no finer looking rifles in the Imperium range than the Skatari Ranger rifles. However, I dislike using bits directly from other ranges as it can be a little bit confusing because if it looks like a galvanic rifle, it should be a galvanic rifle. So for these Skatari arms, what I'm going to do is cut them off at the hand and connect that onto some Death Corps of Krieg hands. The Krieger shoulders are fantastic for the Vostroyans, having large rounded shoulder armor plates with a nice lip on them, which is similar to many of the classic metal sculpts. I'll also carve out the magazine on the galvanic rifle and replace it with a last rifle magazine. And then to complete the picture, I will be cutting off the front third of the galvanic rifle and replacing it with the tip of a last gun. This will shorten the gun dramatically as well as complete the look. Now one way to get a really good looking Vostroyan head would be to green stuff on a fur hat onto a nice gas mask model. However, this is where third party sellers can be a really good alternative, saving you a huge amount of time. A while ago, we did a gas lens video and Anvil Industries kindly sent us some goodies, including these bearskin visor helmets. These are going to be absolutely perfect to make my Vostroyans. So rather than hand sculpting every single helmet, the most complicated aspect of the whole build is done for me. 
These third party suppliers are vital for keeping these exciting ranges and parts of history alive. So I did mention I wanted to do a touch of green stuffing and that is to add the iconic large cuffed gloves and boots that the Vostroyans are known for. Another element I wish to add and to help hide the damage the original Cadian torso had, I also sculpted chain mail across the body. To do this, I used a sharp sculpting tool and poked it with an angled direction in a row and then followed in the row beneath in the opposite direction, repeating that process all the way down the torso until I reached the bottom. And with this sculpted, I would need to leave it to dry for a while. So it turns out I couldn't let sleeping dogs lie. I thought I was done, but something was just not sitting right with me with the silhouette. So I ended up taking it home and doing some sculpting. I added some strips of grilly part around the side of the waist so I could make this lovely waistcoat. And I also added some straps that would attach his backpack. I created some small decorative button areas, much like some of the classic Vostroyans and then also a tube that would connect to the respirator. With all of these elements added, I glued on a couple of bits of plastic, including a nice knife from the Cadian kit and a bunch of purity seals. As the Vostroyans, I always found interesting as one of the only Imperial Guard faction that also used purity seals in the same way that Space Marines and Sisters of Battle do. With these changes made, I'm much, much happier with my Vostroyan, which means it's time to paint him. Too windy for this. I grabbed an undercoat and evenly sprayed the whole model Chaos Black before getting a Vallejo Purple Spray and coming in from the top. I'm not entirely sure why I did this, except I wanted to add a little bit more saturation and vibrancies to the reds of the cloaks. I don't know if this is going to work, I just did it. It's not really going to hurt the paint job, so I may as well experiment with it. For the reds, I used Vallejo's paint range, starting with burgundy red and working up through bloody red to get a nice orangey red highlight. And then I could move on to the silver. All the chainmail and a few accessories and metal areas were painted with Vallejo's gunmetal, which I then washed and highlighted. Moving on to the browns, I picked a nice scale 75 brown for the pants and then a darker brown for all of the wood, the hat and the leather elements of the model before highlighting that with successively lighter tones. Moving on to the gold on the Vostroen, I used Vallejo Shining Gold. With a couple of coats of this to get a consistent finish, I then put some Reichland Flesh Shade Wash all over it to give it a nice deep red tint. I also painted the Purity Seals and Bedroll in Vallejo's Khaki and covered all of the browns and the khaki in a Seraphim Sepia wash. The washes all over this model unfortunately dried super glossy and I had to matte them all down with a spray varnish, which did the trick. Once the model was all matte again, I only needed to do some simple spot highlights before I could finish the model off with some bright red glowing eye lenses. So I love how my Vostroyan has turned out. It definitely needed that extra sculpting, but the hat on top really makes it. And this wouldn't be possible without really cool independent miniature creators making all kinds of awesome stuff to support the hobbies we love. Anvil Industries made these heads, but there are also some amazing creators in Australia. It just so happens I know one of them. If you've never heard of the company Victoria Miniatures, it's a South Australian based miniature company that has been around for quite a while. And it's headed up by Victoria Lamb. Victoria Lamb is an amazing painter, golden demon winner, diorama maker, who now runs a company producing miniature parts and accessories, as well as full kits for sci-fi infantry of the generally human variety. Vic's impact on the painting scene can't be understated, with her golden demon entries helping to popularize techniques such as OSL and these amazing diorama builds. And now her minis continue the legacy of excellent and I've been using them as conversion bits for the better part of the last decade. Vic has a new Kickstarter and we wanted to give it a bit of a shout out, but we also wanted to hear from Vic herself. So we headed over to Adelaide to say hello. So I'm here in Adelaide with Vic from Vic Binnies. Thanks for taking the time to sit down and have a chat with us. Thank you, it's great to see you again. Yeah, it's very good. We actually met at ARC when we went to ARC. Uh, it was super cool. I've actually been a purchaser, customer and collector of some of your minis for like 10 years. It's cool right. to be working with you in a way. Yes, thank you. So you've got a new Kickstarter, Project Warhorse. It's been going a couple of weeks. Still got a couple of weeks to go from today. Basically for grimdark cavalry models. Very cool. What made you choose war horses and cavalry in particular, this unit? The reason I chose cavalry and horses 
is that they're a, a unit that has I've always really enjoyed. Like they've always been a lot of fun. I mean, you've got to be crazy to be riding a horse on a grim dark battlefield. I was really inspired by first off the Australian light horse. I actually did a conversion which I entered in the Demons probably around 2000, a long time ago. Didn't win anything, but it was a cool model and I've always wanted to, to make my own. And so the opportunity to have a go at doing that, but not just do, you know, sort of Australian style, but to go, well, what other regiments can I uh, create their own riders for? So that's really what inspired me to do this. As a fellow Aussie and someone who has a great grandfather who actually was in the Light Horse Battalion, uh, it's really cool to see these kinds of minis and, and the slouchies on some soldiers. I've always been tempted to make a little Aussie <laughs> regiment of guard. Uh, maybe we should make the Cub Scouts for the Space Bears based on Aussies. So we've probably put the cart before the horse. I'm going to ask the question, which is basically what made you get into making your own miniatures? Uh, look, I've been a miniature creator for a very long time. It's been a business for around 15 years, but it really began uh, just because I love the hobby. I love making my own figures. And I always, you know, there was all these figures that you couldn't buy. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make the figures that I wished I could buy. And that's really where Victorian miniatures began. Mm -hmm. And it just started off with some little conversions and I wasn't really thinking about selling them but some mates said, oh, you know, can we get some of those legs and some of those heads or whatever. And at that point I was just giving them away but then it, it kind of just grew and grew and grew from there. Well, I'm super excited about this project. It's really cool and thank you for sharing with us and also uh, giving us some awesome swag to go and paint. Which are, of course, these are 3D prints that we're going to be painting because the Kickstarter isn't finished yet. When it is physical minis for everyone. Um, thanks for taking the time today. Do you want a handshake? Yeah, we just got to do a... Cheers. So the mini I'm going to paint up today is actually going to be one of these Rattlings from Vic Minis. Now Dave got these from Vic a while ago, back when we went to ARC for the first time at the start of the year. And these minis are super cute and I'm really excited to be painting one up today. The IG regiment I've also chosen is the Mordian Iron Guard. And I'll tell you a little bit about them right now. Known as an elite Imperial Guard, the Iron Guard is said to be particularly skilled at putting down insurrections against Imperial rule. The uniform of the Mordian Iron Guard is loosely based off both the United States Marine Corps blue dress uniforms and potentially Fring Corps uniform during the Napoleonic Wars. I apologize if I completely butchered that, but here's a picture here either way. Morty and Iron Guard saw their first pewter models back in 1995 and were available to play in the second edition of Warhammer 40k. Since that time, Morty and Iron Guard unfortunately haven't seen another release, with third parties releasing minis allowing players to create their own Morty and Iron Guard regiments. All of these Rattling Minis are so cute and have so much personality, but the one I wanted to make the most was the one sitting on a crate eating a sandwich. Unfortunately, our particular Mini did have a slight curve when it came to the barrel of the gun. This kind of warping is pretty common with resin Minis and can be easily fixed with some hot water and some gentle bending. After seeing the paint job that Vic had done on her Rattlings, I knew that I wanted to try and do something very similar. Now, I can't really live up to Vic's paint job. It is absolutely gorgeous, but I knew I wanted to try and paint these guys blue as well. The first thing I did was lay down some undertones with some spray paints. I also kind of wanted to create a moody scene, so this would really help with establishing that. With all my undertones established, it was time to move on to painting. Something I've been doing a fair bit when trying to do the Murray method is not letting my colors blend together. But this time around, I wanted to try and establish really smooth blends in between each paint color. To do this, I made sure I kept my colors in a cooler tone and also added in a bit of blue in between those. So for example, when I went ahead and started painting the skin, I made sure to gradually make my way up to that pinkish color by adding in purples and bits of blue. I went ahead and started adding in those really crisp highlights. It was time to finish off the base and also add in some eyes. I find adding irises into eyeballs to be very intimidating, but I wanted to give it a go this time around. Very carefully laid in little black dots and I think I did a pretty okay job. And all this rattling needed was a trim on his base and he was done.
Talon Desert Raiders hail, of course, from the beautiful agricultural world of Talon. However, a minor scuffle during the Horus Heresy with the Iron Warriors chapter saw the surface of their planet scoured and reduced to a barren wasteland. Transportation between subterranean cities and outlets is now only achievable with enclosed vehicles, as this sandblasted hellscape now only has one primary export for the Imperium. Manpower. In order to adapt to the harsh reality of their homeworld, the now named Desert Raiders had to become experts at guerrilla tactics, mounted combat and armoured warfare, for which they are highly regarded across the Imperium. The Desert Raiders are inspired by a mix of sources, most notable of which are the Afghan warriors that resisted against British and later Soviet occupation. They also drawn from sources such as the Arab Legion, which heavily leaned on mechanised and mounted mobility in World War II. With those in mind, you can probably see a lot of the influences in their designs. Having a assembled quite a few 3D printed models in my life, this model went together beautifully. When I go to paint a model, a lot of the time I like to prepare the base so I can paint it at the same time as well. This helps me create a really cohesive artwork as the model now blends seamlessly into the terrain. To start off with, I gave it a simple priming with black and then a really heavy zenithal with brown. Then following the rule of painting from the inside out, I heavily stippled the horse starting with leathery browns building up to a sandblasted yellow colour. As I wanted to reach a fairly pale colour that will still look different to all the leathers that I'm going to use, as I want browns to feature very prominently in this piece. This will help give the feeling of a really dirty and rugged miniature. Now when it comes to all these leathers, I don't want them all to look the same. For each different area, each different strap, holster or boot, I'm going to add in a different colour, whether it be a red, a blue or even a purple. I'll mix something in just so they don't all blend together and they stand out from each other. I'll tend to bounce between all these browns a lot as I go through the rest of the model. Not each part is completely finished and if I make a mess, I'll always go back. But really the purpose of this is if one part starts getting quite dark compared to the rest of the model, I can easily go back and just brighten that part up a bit. Now for the metals, I started off by mixing together blues, greens and purples to make this really dark colour that would also look quite different to all the browns I've used, as the metals should definitely stand out from all these browns that I am using. Then it's simply a matter of mixing in lighter and lighter greys until I reach a white highlight for those pinpoint reflections. Now that I'm fairly happy with how that turned out, it's time to work in a little bit more colour and vibrance. So I'll use reds and greens to make pops of colour across the miniature. For the skin, I'll mix in reds and yellows, just so it's really different from the rest of the tanned leathers that I have going here. Then with some fun stippling across the base to give the effect of a really moody desert with just a bit of a green creepy tinge due to the irradiated and sulfuric nature of the atmosphere, I'll then finish off with a strong dry brush of bone. I would like to take a moment to thank our amazing Patreons who are joining us on this journey. It is because of you we are able to make two videos a week and continually strive to make more content for everyone and keep it nice, fresh and entertaining. There's also a mini Discord exclusively for our Patreons. We do a monthly mini review and a weekly vlog update giving you a behind the scenes of what's going on at the studio. And today I'd like to give an extra special thank you to our newest patrons. Regimental Advisor, Sword and Horde, Commissar Courtney O'Sullivan, Katie and Castellan Joshua Welt, Gunnery Sergeant Roscoe Todd, Miss Hypno Disc. Okay, maybe I added all the Imperial Guard specific titles, but it's themey, right? Thank you all and welcome to the Patreon. Make sure you join the Discord and say hello. Murray, Jen, we finally got to work on a project together. Yeah, that was cool. That was really nostalgic. <laughs> I absolutely loved bringing the Vostroyans back to life and a special thank you to Vic from Vic Minis. It was really great going over and seeing you. Thanks for the models and really good luck for the Kickstarter. If you'd like to throw an Aussie creator a bit of support, go check out Vic's Kickstarter. Yes, please do. She's an awesome creator, great person. Show all her love. So I think I've got to start an IG army now. I just realized there's a lot of hand scrunching happening over here. <laughs> We're all like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, it was really cool to see an awesome rattling. I don't think I've seen a cool rattling in since they were made, really, to be honest. Hobbits with guns, what's not to and love? Eating a sandwich. And uh, that Talon Desert Radar came up awesomely. 
Yeah, and, um, your Voss Droyan, that was a fantastic kit back. Yeah, oh, oh, thank, thank you. It was pretty good. Thank you. Thank There's you. the accolades. That's what he was fishing. Yes, for. yes. Uh, bravo. Very good. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Subscribe, like, and um, we don't really have a sign off, so. I need a big Bo Peep hook. I'm just <laughs> <laughs>